Consumer products giant Procter & Gamble is out better than expected quarterly earnings. But the company is warning again about pesky inflationary pressures. I spoke with P&G's new CEO, John Moeller, about the quarter and the company's outlook. You know, it's interesting. If you look at our business prior to the pandemic, we were growing about 6%, very strong growth on the top line. Our portfolio and strategy worked for us during the pandemic. We maintained essentially that same level of growth. And as you saw in the quarter that we just completed, another 6% growth quarter. Uh, so our, our products are increasingly relevant to consumers across the world. Um, they provide um, protection from a healthcare standpoint, hygiene for the home, and really help my problem, uh, my, excuse me, my family in a, in a time of need. And we're seeing that reflected in demand across categories. What behaviors amongst consumers are you seeing really sticky? Since the last time we spoke, despite Omicron, people have become more mobile, but what have you seen really stick? Still spending more time at home. I think all of us are, and therefore, you know, uh, more clothes to be cleaned, more dishes to be washed, more meals at home with family, need those paper towels. Um, I would say the other uh, sticky change has been a, a pretty significant shift to uh, products of quality who, uh, that I know and trust, again, to address my family's needs in this difficult time. The data point there is what's happened um, with private label shares, both in the US and in Europe. They tend to be the lower priced offerings in the category and market shares are down and continue to be down past three, six, 12 months, both in the US and in Europe. Are you surprised to see that uh, P&G and, and a lot of your rivals have pushed through price increases? You, you would think consumers would be trading down a bit, no? I, if I just reflect on our business, we've never been in a better position in terms of the superiority of our offerings, the uh, efficacy of those products to do the job they're designed to do. Um, at a time of high need. So you put all that together and price elasticities decline. Um, we're seeing it's still very, very early, and this is a bumpy road, so there will be bumps on this road. But to date, our price elasticities are 20 to 30 percent lower than we were expecting. And as I indicated, you know, typically at this point in the cycle, there's a shift down to private label, which we're not yet uh, seeing. So we're going to stay on the front foot with innovation, continuing to improve uh, products, packages, communication, our retail execution. And through that, actually, despite some price increases, improving value uh, for consumers. Uh, within the earnings, uh, John, you did raise your outlook for uh, commodity inflation to, I believe, about $2.3 billion from $2.1 billion or so. But you know, given the success you're having pushing through price increases, do you plan to push through more? We've announced price increases uh, in the majority, I think nine out of 10 categories, um, some of those price increases have not yet come to the shelf. They haven't yet come to market. So we're gonna work through that uh, before we uh, take the next step. Do you see any signs we are nearing peak inflation just from your standpoint in your business? There are some commodities that are starting to modestly roll over, which is encouraging. There is capacity being added uh, to some of the input supply uh, chains, which is encouraging. On the other hand, um, in markets like labor and transportation, um, I don't expect any near-term decreases. There are, uh, I can tell you really for the past few weeks, John, my Twitter feed has been dominated with photos on Twitter of empty shelves and grocery stores. Take us through what you're seeing in your manufacturing plants. Are you able to get enough product to the market right now? Our supply organization is doing a tremendous job to keep products on shelf. If you look at the U.S., I believe we're uh, at 94% of demand. Uh, so there's still work to do. And obviously that differs by uh, category. But we're doing everything we can uh, to bring uh, products to shelf and keep uh, supply and stock to serve consumers. Are there certain categories where you just, you can't keep them in stock? <laughs> it varies over time when we have, obviously this will be obvious, uh, but when there are 
significant surges in demand in any category versus the norm, um, we struggle. Now, we're working on a, a number of focus areas to strengthen the execution of our strategy. One of those is supply and anticipating a wider variance in, in demand. So we'll get there. Uh, but we, we do have work to do. Have you seen any uh, worker absenteeism uh, in the plants because of the pandemic? We have a very dedicated group of colleagues that are dedicated to the business, they're dedicated to each other. They're dedicated to making a difference in the lives of consumers around the world. Of course, in the middle of large COVID outbreaks in different parts of the world, uh, there are quarantine needs. My children uh, aren't at school and need to be cared for. I have a family member who uh, needs to be tended to. I have difficulty securing transportation. All of those affect uh, daily availability of, of people to do their jobs but they're working through it in a very, very impressive and committed way. You know, one of the benefits, uh, you've touched every part of your organization, COO, CFO, and now CEO. Uh, what are you seeing in terms of global growth? Uh, the consensus appears to be things will slow down this year, but from your seat, how do you see it? Strong, hmm. uh, at least as relates to our categories. I don't have insight into the entire economy or, um, other categories, but we've seen no slowdown in demand. Um, we did see a little slowdown in the fourth quarter in China, where our growth, top line growth was flat versus a year ago, but still 12% on a two year stack basis and still over 6% globally with our second largest market essentially flat versus a uh, year ago. And we don't, you know, we don't look at the market as something that's handed to us. I mean, obviously, the world and what's going on does affect market growth, but we also affect market growth. And that's fundamental to our strategy to grow markets as a way to sustain, sustainably grow our business and grow share. Lastly, John, you're now uh, the top guy calling the shots. And in recent weeks, P&G has, has made some acquisitions in the prestige beauty category. Is one of the reads that under your leadership, you're going to be a little more aggressive in growing out growth categories like this? These are projects we've been working on for some time. The first step was consolidating our portfolio into daily use categories where performance drives brand choice. And we've been saying for some time that we're committed to win in each of the 10 categories that we've chosen to compete in. And there are a couple categories uh, where we would benefit from a broader portfolio in that uh, winning endeavor. And one of those is beauty and and skincare. These are projects we've been working on for some time, so I wouldn't take it in any way as a signal of change uh, related to leadership. It's just a fundamental part of our strategy. And that was P&G's new CEO, John Moeller, on his better than expected quarterly results.